here we are, the granddaddy of all quantum weirdness, the infamous double slit experiment. To understand this experiment, we first need to see how particles, or little balls of matter, act. If we randomly shoot a small object, say a marble, at the screen, we see a pattern on the back wall where they went through the slit and hit. Now, if we add a second slit, we would expect to see a second band duplicated to the right. Now, let's look at waves. The waves hit the slit and radiate out, striking the back wall with the most intensity directly in line with the slit. The line of brightness on the back screen shows that intensity. This is similar to the line the marbles make. But when we add the second slit, something different happens. If the top of one wave meets the bottom of another wave, they cancel each other out. So now, there is an interference pattern on the back wall. Places where the two tops meet are the highest intensity, the bright lines, and where they cancel, there is nothing. So, when we throw things, that is, matter, through two slits, we get this. Two bands of hits. And with waves, we get an interference pattern of many bands. Good so far. Now, let's go quantum. <laughs> An electron is a tiny, tiny bit of matter, like a tiny marble. Let's fire a stream through one slit. It behaves just like the marble, a single band. So, if we shoot these tiny bits through two slits, we should get, like the marbles, two bands. What? An interference pattern! We fired electrons, tiny bits of matter, through. But we get a pattern like waves, not like little marbles. How? How could pieces of matter create an interference pattern like a wave? It doesn't make sense. But physicists are clever. They thought, maybe those little balls are bouncing off each other and creating that pattern. So. They decide to shoot electrons through one at a time. There is no way they could interfere with each other. But after an hour of this, the same interference pattern is seen to emerge. The conclusion is inescapable. The single electron leaves as a particle, becomes a wave of potentials, goes through both slits, and interferes with itself to hit the wall like a particle. But mathematically, it's even stranger. It goes through both slits, and it goes through neither. And it goes through just one, and it goes through just the other. All of these possibilities are in superposition with each other. But physicists were completely baffled by this. So they decided to peek and see which slit it actually goes through. They put a measuring device by one slit to see which one it went through and let it fly. <laughs> but the quantum world is far more mysterious than they could have imagined. When they observed, the electron went back to behaving like a little marble. It produced a pattern of two bands, not an interference pattern of many. The very act of measuring or observing which slit it went through meant it only went through one, not both. The electron decided to act differently, as though it was aware it was being watched. And it was here that physicists stepped forever into the strange never world of quantum events. What is matter? Marbles or waves? And waves of what? And what does an observer have to do with any of this? Now, some scientists over the years have postulated 
that this physical world only exists when it's observed. I agree. Why? Because of this. When you put a computer disk into a computer, it does not read all the information on the disk at the same time. It reads that part that it is observing, whatever that laser is hitting at the time. All the other stuff is still in information form. It's not been transferred to the screen as pictures, etc. The world is made up of atoms, and as quantum physicists have shown, atoms have no solidity. How can something which is basically empty space make up a solid world? It can't. The reason it appears to is because the information in the waveform metaphysical universe is decoded through into apparent solidity. Again, it's just the way we decode reality that gives it form. We take information from a disk, we put it on the screen, it seems to have time-space solidity. But it doesn't. It's just information being read and that's exactly what's happening to us. The reason it appears solid and it appears three-dimensional is because we live in a holographic world. We see holograms, you can buy them in the shops, where they appear to be three-dimensional, but actually they're not. It's just the illusion of the way they're made. And how they make them is they have a laser, part of it goes across the object they want to photograph, another part goes directly onto a photographic plate, and then the part that's passed across the object goes onto that plate, and they collide. Those two parts of the laser collide, and they create, here we go, a wave form. We call it in uh, holographics an interference pattern. It's like dropping two pebbles in a pond and then the waves they create collide and that is a wave form representation of where those pebbles fell, how heavy they were, how high they fell from, etc., how big they were, etc. And this is what the wave form again looks like on a holographic print. It's information. It seems to be nothing. It looks like a fingerprint, appropriately, actually. But what is it? But you fire a laser at that, and suddenly a three-dimensional, and the best of them, a very solid-looking image comes up. This is how we create our reality. It's holographic. This guy um, is in an, in an Australian city. I think it was Melbourne. But he was projected as a hologram onto a stage in Adelaide. This is one that CNN did. So we are creating a holographic uh, version of this information, just like a hologram does in our heads. That's where it comes from. It's this construct.